Welcome to Risk. I'm Magda. Before you look at anything too closely, I want you to close your eyes and think about beauty. Maybe you think about an object, a color, a texture, a person. Maybe you think about a whole lot of things, or maybe there's only one thing that just immediately, that's what beauty is. Beauty can be really hard to describe, and right when you get to one thing that is like the epitome of beauty, you think of something else that's the direct opposite, but it's also incredibly beautiful. We tend to, in a lot of different societies, have these weirdly concrete definitions of beauty. This is how you look beautiful. This is why something is valuable, because it's beautiful, because of these colors or shapes, or because it looks really valuable. And what does that mean? Now open your eyes. I want you to really challenge what you think is beautiful. Why do you think it's beautiful? Maybe the complete opposite of what you think is beautiful can also be beautiful. How can we apply this to art? As we all know, it's incredibly hard to define art. It's even hard when someone asks you, oh, what kind of art do you do? And you're sitting there and you're like, well, it's this, sometimes it's this, and I don't know. And that's completely valid. It's good to always challenge yourself and invigorate new ideas and try and figure out what is beautiful and what is art. These are three studies of James Terrell Peace meeting at MoMA PS1. And while I can't show you the image of the piece, I highly recommend you to look it up. But any images of this piece cannot compare to seeing the piece in real life. This is what we call site-based installation art, where to really experience the piece, you have to go to that specific place and be immersed in it. James Terrell works with colors and light to create an atmosphere that you can experience where the color is really the main piece and the art itself is you and your relationship to that piece when you're thinking about it, when you're experiencing it, what it means to you and really challenges what we think of as art instead of just having a 2D rectangle with pictures of people or anything, which is a very valid form of art. We get this very kind of amorphous ideas of color and community because when you go into the piece it's completely silent there's a group of strangers in there also experiencing it and while you're doing something that's very rare and interesting of you're all experiencing this beautiful piece of art you don't know these people and so it creates a really interesting sense of community and so today we're going to be looking at how we create community with art what art can mean, how we can expand that, and how we can challenge our conceptions of beauty, create new conceptions of beauty, and amplify our voices to celebrate the everyday, celebrate things that are magic, and celebrate what really matters to you. Hey, welcome back to the studio. So today we're starting out by making 100 dots. While this seems like a crazy idea, you can use it as a really nice meditative process, especially if you're trying to really hone in on one certain skill. If you found one drawing material or one technique over the course that you really, really enjoy or that you're struggling with, I highly recommend using that to make your 100 dots. They can be drawings or paintings or collage or anything of anything, so long as it's a dot. And what you're really trying to focus on with these dots is go through and try and distill certain memories or emotions into these dots. Now, memories and emotions and experiences are really complicated, so that's why you have 100 dots to try and expand and play with certain aspects and see what's the most successful. Now, you can do what I did and just put on some music and try and get through the dots as quickly as possible and see how you can make art really quickly because that's something that I can struggle with sometimes and I just let projects drag out forever or maybe you have a lot of time and you want to take your time with it and make each dot really really special any of that is valid any of that is fine
finishing the whole process of making the 100 dots. I have a lot of dots in front of me. Not all of them I love, but I was really looking for that feeling of sitting in summer light, that really intense golden light, sort of in between dusk and afternoon, maybe around like six o'clock when everything's just drenched in this golden haze where it gives you a lot of nostalgia for like summers of the past and childhood and growing up and how summer felt like it lasted forever but for one second and was like this weird magical amorphous thing where things just felt more possible and alive and warm but it's not quite here yet and so you're still full of like hope and anticipation of like what the summer might bring and the sense of like rebirth and new life but also a wholeness and uh sense of being both complete and in the process. So I really liked this stop because it made me feel that sense of like calm and nostalgia and love. And I also really liked this stop for the way that it just used light. I liked this stop as well. And I liked this stop. So out of the 100 dots, there's only like four that I really enjoyed, which is honestly reflective of my larger art practice, which is why I work all the time so I can get a few pieces I really like. So now we're all going to face the challenge together of figuring out amongst the dots you really love, what worked the absolute best? Was it the color scheme? Is it the line quality that's in common between all of the dots that you have? Is it the material that you used? Is it the shapes? and take that and distill what emotion, memory, experience you were going for into a tangible object you can take with you. It doesn't have to be an object you can take with you everywhere. It doesn't have to be tiny, it doesn't have to be huge, but some object. Maybe it's an object you already have, but you're going to augment it and change it in some way to really get to the root of that memory or experience. I'm really excited to see what you come up with and I'm really proud of you for coming this far. And thank you for trusting me and coming on this journey with me. So go out, take risks, make mistakes, be careful and make yourself proud. Mrs. Gladys and I wanna say thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. We're so proud of you and we're so excited to see all of the art you make. I came to you as an artist with a million ideas and now I leave you as a friend in a zillion sunbeams. And I hope I can see you soon. Come on, let's go. Okay. No, it's right now. Come on. <sighs>